Okay, good morning everybody. Um, I, I must invest some time in uh, reporting some very important news relating to dogs and coronavirus. And in particular, we are going to explore uh, a relevant paper that has been published just a few days ago, April uh, 14, 2020, uh, which attempts to track a correlation between the spread of the coronavirus and um, and some, let's say, uh, genetic um, heritage of certain organisms of, of certain animals, and within that frame um, includes dogs as um, possible um, possible reservoir of the uh, coronavirus, and then as possible carriers of the coronavirus. So is uh, we're gonna go into some details. is a very very important topic, uh, which I anticipate already. It comes with uh, with the important limitations. So we need to take that with a grain of salt. Uh, and actually, this is why we are here because we need to be critical with constructively critical toward that research and be aware of the consequences that that can bring in the, into the realm of, uh, of uh, dogs and into the realm of life that um, uh, where dogs and human coexist or uh, live together right so uh, in a moment we're gonna dive into this um, but first and foremost please please support this channel like this video, it takes nothing, it takes just one split second, you find the thumb down below, click on that thumb, so you like this video, and um, there is also a subscribe button on the side of the thumb, or somewhere around, subscribe, subscribe to the channel, and uh, at the end of this video, uh, leave also a comment, but also when you subscribe, there is also a little bell, not everybody may be aware of that. There is a little bell, so click on that bell and allow notifications. So if I do other videos that are hopefully relevant to your interest, um, you will be notified. And just that, it takes a moment, but just that will support this channel uh, in the sense that um, will be more visible for other people. And so this channel can grow and possibly uh, we can bring valuable information out there to more people uh, that may be interested into that. So please like, subscribe, hit the bell, and at the end of this video or somewhere in between, leave a comment down below. And now let's dive into this. It is a very important uh, topic that we need to treat today, that we need to go through today. And we go. And let's dive into this paper the, published on the Molecular Biology and Evolution, uh, Oxford Academic, as you can see, Extreme Genomic CPG Deficiency in SARS-CoV-2 and Evasion of Host Antiviral Defense. Published by Mr. Xuaxia. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this correctly, but I hope so. And you see the paper is published on, on just a few days ago, 14 April uh, 2020, uh, and is available in PDF. You can just click here and download it. By, for your convenience, I will put a link down below, so you will find a link that will bring you directly to this page, to the official publishing page, and you can download the, the paper. Uh, so, uh, just quickly, let me say about Mr. Suaxia, uh, who I didn't know before, I did a quick check on the ResearchGate page. For those who are not familiar with um, ResearchGate, you can see is a platform where, this is my profile, uh, where all the scholars, academics, uh, researchers can have access, can be part of this community and share papers, uh, information, preliminary data, and so on, right? And also, uh, um, uh, presentations, conferences, papers, and so on. So, um, had a look to the uh, profile of Mr. Xuaxia, 
which uh, who has a, an important uh, rate and uh, is certainly somebody that has been dedicating his life to research he also leads uh, a lab uh, meaning that he has students and assistants that help him in, help him in doing research so uh, it's just to to give a frame to the fact that this gentleman is not somebody that just wake up a mom a, mor a morning and say oh i have this idea about coronavirus and uh, uh, canines for example or how to track the some aspects of the coronavirus so it's somebody that has been doing a serious research however the research comes with important limitations with some controversies controversies also and we are going to dive into this right now right so here the paper as we were saying extreme genomic cpg deficiency in sars cov 2 which is the covid 19 as we also know and evasion of host antiviral defense evasion of host antiviral defense this is the real topic of the paper so how the uh, um, certain mechanisms of antiviral defense are evaded by the virus right so the virus uh, gets into an host and is able to evade some responses some antiviral responses that that organism is applying to combat the virus right and actually the um, the the core of, of this paper is how the that protein which is a protein uh, in, present in organisms like for example in mammals in human being and in other animals uh, he's evaded by the virus so the virus has learned how to evade how to avoid for that zap protein to attack the virus when the virus uh, uh, enters an organism enters uh, an individual for example right and and a new host right so let's try to explain this a little bit closer a little bit better um, and i try to be as much simple as possible let's imagine the virus every organism as a as a as a genetic uh heritage right a genetic uh, package let's say of elements right so let's say this is the virus and all, all this virus is made of a lot of genetic elements right and this is the host so the virus enters into the host right now the host in order to fight the virus before creating antibodies so before the antibody response it may have some other strategies to fight the virus and in fact there is this zap protein zinc uh, finger uh, antiviral protein that has the ability to attack some uh, areas of the genetic uh, part of the virus right so uh, the more presence of these areas in the genetic uh, mm, mm, uh, package let's say of the virus the more the zap can fight the virus as an antiviral response so what the virus has developed has developed the ability to reduce that area that can be attacked by the uh, zinc finger antiviral protein so that the zinc finger finger antiviral protein is less effective in in its antiviral response to the virus and so what as a consequence the virus can proliferate and can improve its fitness and can survive and can uh, keep expanding in when is in that type of host right so this uh part of the virus of the covid 19 that is attacked by the zap protein is the um is called technically cpg right so by uh, reducing its cpg areas so to speak the virus has learned let's put it this way to protect itself from the attack of the antiviral protein right from an organism right and so this is thought uh, is considered in the paper as 
this is considered the, the, the foundation of the paper. So, um, in the attempt of understanding how the COVID-19 has developed, in which organism, in which animal has been, has becoming so resistant, has becoming so strong, right? In which animal we find a low level of a CPG, which means the virus have produced less CPG and though has become so resistant and more resistant to the uh, ZAP protein, right? And so for uh, what is in our knowledge, which is very limited, the target went on canines, on dogs, right? Because actually in dogs, a form of uh, coronavirus which is actually a different form of coronavirus is not beta coronavirus is alpha coronavirus so already is already another uh, strain of the virus uh, but anyway uh, this virus has been found to have a low level of cpg which let's assume that the virus has developed this resistance uh, uh, to the zap protein right this uh, comes with very important limitations first and foremost because I was saying is a different strain of coronavirus is an alpha coronavirus is, is not exactly the same and this is already uh, can consider can be considered a limitation in 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 in, in this whole reasoning right and um, another important, for probably more important limitation, which is recognized also, acknowledged by the author itself, himself of this paper, uh, is that uh, we don't have a lot of data. I mean, we don't have uh, the genetic data for all the mammals, right? For all the animals that are part of the mammals uh, group, right? So uh unfortunately we have important data uh, i mean fortunately we have important data about dogs because it's one of the most studied species uh also genetically speaking right and it appears that in dogs uh that level is low right uh but in order to really say dogs can be the animal where the virus has developed that ability to become resistance to the ZAP protein, right? To the ZAP, to the zinc protein, antiviral protein. We would need to compare that to all of the other uh, animals and we don't have those data, right? So uh, the paper uh, suggests that a certain type of attention should be put on dog for, for the reasons as we have explained before. Uh, but also comes with a huge risk that people that do not have understanding of genetic and um, uh, may, may make an equation and start thinking about dogs being the carriers of the coronavirus. And this would be very uh, incorrect for the data we have now, for the data we have now, and would be very dangerous, especially for those areas where dogs live free ranging, for those areas where dogs are, uh, um, are free to move around, are part of the community, and people may not necessarily have understanding of what's going on about dogs, about virus. So, and for example, you see, if the press start covering that aspects in a way that is not balanced, in a way that is not, uh, that may, may easily foster panic, may easily foster uh, confusion. And, and so the equation is immediate and there are, are part of the, of the globe where there are free engine dogs that immediately a government or a, or, or, or a city, a, a urban organization, whoever may, may make the equation and start going out there and killing all the dogs because maybe now the dogs carry the coronavirus, right? So we need to be very aware of that. We need to explain that's not the case to people, to our clients, to our family. There's this article here on life science that actually reports and I'm, I will be not surprised that other, other articles, other press 
uh, magazine start to cover this paper and I would be not surprised that some start to uh, uh, make some sensationalism around this topic and say oh my god now dogs are carrying the coronavirus and is a, in a split moment that voice will get spread and will be panic for the dogs living on the street in those communities where there are fringing dogs but also for the dogs that are living in our home and people start to becoming suspicious of dogs and so your neighbor will see you around with your dogs and start being suspicious because now maybe the dogs is carrying the coronavirus while we are way far from all of this. We don't need to panic. We need to provide some important, relevant, valuable, balanced information. And so the study may, this study that we have been investigating um, may be valuable from certain perspective, but we need to really take it with a grain of salt and certainly not spread the voice that dogs may carry coronavirus. As I was mentioning here also in this new study, uh, in this article in Life Science, um, the title you see, new study suggests COVID-19 hopped from dogs to human. Here is why you should be skeptical, right? And in fact, these uh, life science, they're nice, they're very good, they're balanced and, and, and they're critical um uh, in, in most of the cases um and here we have for example a counterpart uh um that's uh that say i guess is a is a, um, a is a scientist from uh um san francisco let me see if I, okay plenty pennings uh yes i've read her paper some of her papers somewhere uh, she has been studying already other viruses like HIV and other other diseases like uh, dengue uh, and other type of influenza, hepatitis. Like uh, she says that uh, Mr. Xia, in his paper, noted that studies have shown an association between decreasing CPG in viral. RNA genomes and increased virulence, meaning low CPG virus appears associated with more severe infection. However, although evolution favor mutation that delete CPG sites, as we have said before, the CPG sites reduces so that the 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 zap protein cannot be so effective on the virus um, it doesn't mean that virus with low numbers of cpg sites are necessarily more virulent pennings said for example the bk virus contains very few cpg sites and resides in the kidneys of an estimated 60 to 80 percent of adults but typically only triggers symptoms in immunos, Im, immunosuppressed people, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Miss, um, uh, Dr. Penig, Penig says. Uh, so, all in all, uh, we have highlighted a few um, limitations of the study. We have also heard uh, through this our last uh, press article the voice of another expert that uh, provide, let's say, a counter voice, not a counter, but a different voice on this type of investigation. But what's the takeaway um, of all of this? Is that there is no evidence at this point that dogs carry that coronavirus, the COVID-19 coronavirus, the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus, which is part of the beta coronavirus group, although in dogs there are some coronavirus which are part of the alpha coronavirus, there are some differences in the coronavirus that are present in dogs, which uh, um, comes with a lower level level of CPG, uh, which do not necessarily mean that dogs have been the place, the animal, the species, where the COVID have been evolved and become more resistant 
more resilient, resilient, more resistant and stronger, and then later proliferated and ex and and from there passed from dogs to human directly or from dog to an, another animal and then to human right so we are way far from understanding and knowing and all of that mr uh, xua himself highlight mr xia himself highlights those limitations so please be clear on that tell to your clients to your friends to your to your people to your colleagues that's uh, a very preliminary research which comes with limitations which comes with uh, with some also debatable points of view so there is no reason now to be concerned about dogs being the place where the COVID-19 has been developed or whatever other COVID has been developed uh, and then being passed to human right and especially for those who live in those areas where free-ranging dogs are present please spread the voice for everybody for all of you share this video so people can learn so people can understand and people can further spread the voice for the health of the community of the dogs and for a broader and better understanding of what on what's going on in science in research and in the world about this coronavirus and for other animals too about the coronavirus uh, thank you very much for your attention again please please uh, remember like this video with the, with the thumbs up that is down below subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the bell so you will be notified when a new video comes and let me know uh, as a comment at the bottom of this uh, video there is a common comment uh, uh, spot right you can comment tell me what you think what you think about this what you think about this video the contents of this video what opinion you have what idea you have let me know in a comment and i touch base with you soon and thank you very much for your attention. I see you soon. Bye.